Hi, I'm Kate. This is my sweetheart, Paul. We are the founders of Restico Hardware. Welcome to Installing Inspiration. We're going to show you how to live in art and live inspired. Let's go. Let's go. Today on Installing Inspiration, we're going to focus on prepping, painting, and distressing a barn door. But before we go there, I wanted to ask Kate a little bit about the story behind why this barn door? Grandpa grew up on a ranch. He passed away this last year. I really wanted to do this door in honor of him. So the double X barn door is what she chose because it, it carries the story of her grandpa. It totally reminds and me of I that. love that. that. That is where we bring soul to this space. So let's go ahead and grab this door and put it up on the sawhorses. Okay, so here are some of the tools and materials that we're going to need to get our door ready for paint. Paul, tell us about these. Yeah, so what we have here is some wood filler and uh, a can of Bondo and hardener. And then putty knife. the putty knife. We love the <laughs> knife. And then we have some sandpaper and of course the sander. Sander. So let's get these over to the door and get started on this. Okay, so the first step in prepping this door is going to be filling holes. Now. We want to use the wood filler to fill the holes. Kate, can you show us how to go about doing that? Yes. We call this the dabby dab scrapey scrape method. <laughs> you have to do it with exactness. Yes. Okay, so... A little bit of wood filler and then scrape it off. Okay, so you're just getting a little bit on the, the tip there of the edge corner. Yeah, not too much. You don't okay. use too much of this. That's where the Bondo comes in. Okay, yeah, so let's do talk about the Bondo then. Uh, any larger gaps where you will have joints. And you can see where we've already put Bondo at this joint. This is the style of the door and this is a rail. So there's a joint right there where this comes together. And this one happened to have a, a little bit of a crack there. So we're painting this door. You're not gonna see that Bondo, no problem. Fill it with Bondo because it'll stay together. The, what, what happens with the wood putty? The it wood will filter? chip and fall out. Yeah, it'll just fall out. Yeah, it's so, just for small spaces. That's right. That's where you'll use the Bondo. But for this door, we actually want character, don't we? Yeah, we're going to add some. So we're going to show you how to do that next. Grandpa Jarman, he would have wanted this to be beat up, right? OK, yeah. so no more filling. Let's put the Bondo and the putty away, the wood filler. And uh, we're actually going to make a tool that'll help enhance more of, of the character. We're going to learn how to distress this door. That's right. I love distressing doors. This is my favorite part of the process. Okay, so here are the tools that we're going to need. I'm going to show you how to make, make a tool with tools, which is pretty cool. Let's so do it. Uh, a drill, and we have a shim here because it's the only thing I could find. So uh, you can use a stick, you can use anything. Just drill a few holes in one side of this stick. Those are uh, just some sort of guide holes so that you don't split this wood out. And then I'm gonna drill it into the door. <laughs> and, then, and then screw these all the way through. You wanna hang on to that, Kate? Yep. And what we're doing is we are creating a family of worms. And these worms love to eat wood. And this is, this is a really cool type of distressing. It makes the, the wood actually look like it's been eaten by worms. And um, the beauty of a distressed door is you can't damage it, right? Everything that we're gonna do is just gonna add soul and character to this door. That's right, so now, can you guess what you do with this? Kate, just give it a try. Let's do it. There it is. Okay, so. This legitimately looks like worms were eating into this This wood, naturally right? occurs, so this is awesome. So that was really fast, now we have this tool. We can go throughout the whole thing. However, there is a wrong way to distress a door. You can't force it, you have to tell grandpa's story. So what was happening? And why did the worm eat? Right there. This was look up at the grain. The, yeah, exactly. You gotta look at, at you know, the end. <laughs> the end of, of this, this rail, you know, maybe the worms entered in there. So if you can tell the story and logically go through this process of distressing, 
then it will be more authentic and you're gonna love it. It'll, it'll tell that story and have soul. So, Kate, you wanna go to town on that then? I do. I wanna see what you can do. Okay, now you do it. Okay. Tell me what All right, you got. so so this is great. I, I like that we don't polka dot the thing. I like that it has some rhyme or reason, oh, and, yes. and I like that you maybe would do a little bit there, and then a few here. Concentrate in one area, and then leave a lot Undone. not done. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's about what you don't do as well as what you do. If the whole thing's rustic, then it's not. Then nothing is rustic, yeah. yeah. Okay, so these wormholes look legit. Let's move on to cracks. Okay, so this is the tool that we need to make cracks. And as you know, as wood ages, it takes in and releases moisture. And in that process, it swells and contracts and it will split. So where will it split? It'll split at the end grain. So we have end grain all over here. There's, there's at the, the rail, at the ends of the rail, kind of like where we put the uh, wormholes. And so you take this chisel, this is a one inch, and you'll put it on edge just like this with the handle against the door and you'll just kind of move it up like that and we legitimately have a crack right there and you can tell this poor door took in a lot of moisture those big monsoons out on the plains so on the top rail we do one going and it would stop right there and we take another one and stop right there and we like thinking things in thirds so We'll do another one there. Okay. And man, it even split way down here. But it looks like it's coming from the top and that's why it's important to, to end it deeper than how you start it. What I love about this is telling the story and that's exactly what we're doing with this distressing. When you're doing it, you're thinking about what happened, how you can tell the story through the distressing and it becomes yours, now it's your story. Yeah, whether, whether it really happened that way or not, you're right, you're telling this story and then you're giving it a soul. Right. And I think that people can feel that. This chisel can do a lot of other types of distressing. What you can do is just take it and work along, kind of walk it along the edge of the door and, and let, it, let it get beat up a little bit because grandpa would often haul in this saddle and smack the horn against the door, right? The edge of the door would just chunk off. Maybe he had a, a farm implement that he was working on. And it didn't fit inside It didn't door. fit. <laughs> he tried it. <laughs> exactly. It and so, so you, gotta, you gotta think about what happened and where it would have happened. What's logical? Logically, the bottom of the door, it got kicked. So why don't you take grandpa's boot which is this hammer. <laughs> and you think about how many times he kicked that door. He had long legs, so he might have kicked it way up here, right? <laughs> so that's what you can do with a hammer. But again, think about logically, where would that be happening? Okay, so this looks pretty good. We got wood chips everywhere. I think, I think this is telling the story that we want to tell. We got the wormholes, we got cougar scratches, we got cracks, uh, we've got grandpa's water boot, water damage, everything. So this tells the story that we want to tell, right? Okay, so now we've got to sand this because we really don't want to leave it as is. There's a lot of areas where you can get slivers and uh, it's just not smooth to the touch. So now we want to ease it over with sand. OK, 
Okay, so when we're sanding the door, there's a few things that we want to try and do. There's a lot of sharp edges and corners that uh, the, the door has on the, on the corners and edges and, and the style and rail. And we want to ease those over a little bit, as well as ease over the, the huge distressing marks that we have so that, so that you can run your hand over the whole thing and there's, you're not going to get a sliver or um, bust a nail or anything. So, Kate, why don't you go ahead and start easing that over. We'll turn the vacuum on here. Okay, so we've got this door all distressed up. It tells the story, it's very inspiring, and now we're ready to paint it. So we want the paint, we want the finish to go along with the distressing. We want it to tell that same story. So we're not gonna do an even coat over the whole thing. We've chosen to use a roller to get the bulk of the paint on. And two hand brushes. So it's not perfect, but we can get in the grooves. Yeah, and, and what, does, what does the brush do that, it, that a roller doesn't do? It's gonna really get in the places where the roller can't. And then it also gives that hand painted look, right? Yes. It puts the streaks in it. Yeah. So, so it's gonna give that's it kind of why we're looking for that and to get into the gaps as well. Yes, you got it. Okay, so um, if you did want a full clean, full coverage paint job on your door or if you had a bigger project, you may want to consider a gravity fed sprayer or an airless sprayer. Uh, those require a lot of prep work. We've put some drop cloth down, but that's about it. I mean, we would have to mask this whole place off if we wanted to use one of those. Right? Lots of overspray so, and probably too much paint for this project. So let's let's move forward with uh, rolling this on. If you want to follow up and give it the the nice touch, the the hand painted touch with the brush, that'll be perfect. Okay, let's paint this door. Let's for sure get all of the bondoed places because we don't really want that to show. And we want to save ourselves some work because we're gonna take some of this, a lot of this off. And so if we can kind of look at the full picture and where we want it to land, then, then we'll save some, some work trying to strip paint off. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is actually adding the soul and character that we need for this story. You can see kind of the, the brush strokes. That makes it so real. Look at that. Okay. All right, Kate, come over here. Look at that. Really get the distressing. See that? Oh, no. Okay, so it's really critical to seal the door. And so, especially on the end grain. The end grain is, it acts kind of like a straw and it like slurps up All moisture. the moisture. Yeah, so and that's where you get the expanding and contracting. And we do want this door to stay true and, uh, and, and, and not warp. And so sealing the door is a critical part. Okay, so we've, we're gonna let that dry now. I think it looks really good and then we'll get back to it and, and kind of go over it with the sander okay. and take a little bit off and give it that worn look. Okay, let's come back here in about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, oh this, this, is, good. this is dry, ready to go. Okay, so now what we wanna do is kinda of wrap this up, give it some wear, sand over the whole thing, hit the edges to expose some of that wood. So you want to grab that sponge, I'll grab this uh, sander. I'm going to take this corner. Okay. I got this corner! <laughs> yeah, you know, Perfect. where right here would make sense that more wear would be up on some other components. 
because something was rubbing up against there, you know, maybe it's something was It's a nailed. natural rustic That's piece. right. Okay, I'm liking it. I love it. Okay, now we just gotta get this thing dusted off. <laughs> You're throwing it at me. <laughs> okay, what do you think? Let's, uh, let's call this good. That's Grandpa's door right there.